How are we going, folks? Welcome back to the Nightmare Cabin. I've got two special guests for me tonight. I've got Andy and Lee from Death Collector. How are we going, guys? Yeah, all good, good. good. Yeah. yeah, all good. So I've got the... Uh... Crap down in Birmingham. It's been pissing it down all day. Oh, it's not so, stopped. Yeah. yeah, two days here. It's, it's exactly the same. Soon it, it sort of clears for a bit. You see a bit of blue sky. Oh, it's all over now. And about 10 yeah. minutes later, it just starts again. So, I had many yeah. plans. Many plans and none of them got done. No. So, <laughs> no. no I, 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 I was just saying to Lee, I, um, I did 11 night shifts last week. And um, all week I've been intending on mowing the lawn. And uh, there is no lawn. It's just become a swamp. So we're abandoning that for now. So... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It'll get it'll get we uh we're talking about then this relentless monster of an album, Death's Toll. And uh we'll be we've got some vinyl pong for you later on. We'll show that off later. But um yeah, this uh the album's doing well now. It's it's how long's it been out now? It it came out around was it just before Christmas or just after? Was it no 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 it was it came out it came out at the end of June last year. Oh, right. I'm well bit late to the party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's just about what is it about eight months old now? So, but uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 done really well. I think I think people seem to like it. Uh, yeah, and the, the good thing about it is it's picking up it's picking up interest as well. So it's it's not one of these ones that uh, was an instant hit with everybody. But um, yeah, a lot of people are picking it up and finding it as well, which is you know finding out about the band as well, which is good. So. We've got a slow burn reaction then, but then that's sometimes that's that's even better because sometimes it, it, with everything, you have so many releases come out every day now. I think it's some releases are it's this is the hit this week and then it's gone and just memory hold. These slow burners might be they might work out for the better and um and it's obviously getting around word of mouth. People obviously recommending it to each other and so on and so forth. No, nah, it certainly is, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, like I say, I, for me personally, I mean, I, I'm I'm happy with that. I'd much rather people, um, I'd much rather people find out, find a band instead of, you know, the band, you know, self-promoting themselves, like mental. But, um, so, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy with it. So, you know, I mean, we all went into this, this whole project, the old project anyway. It was just a bit of fun, really. So, uh Anything we get out of it is just a bonus, really. We never, you know, we never really expected really to be doing what we're doing now. We never really expected to have an album out, really, for a, you know, for a label as well. So, well, you have been pretty prolific in the last uh, in the last few years, haven't you? Because you've got obviously you had Memoriam, and then you had Darkened, yeah. and yeah. now yeah. Um, Death Collector. You've, um, yeah, you've been, you've been pushing the albums out pretty consistently the last couple of years. So let's go back to the beginning and how did Death Collector come about? And um, yeah, we'll, and we'll pick up where we left off with Lee and how Lee got involved. Yeah, well, I mean, I suppose it's easier for me to answer that because it was me and Mick that sort of, uh, you know, it all started really. I mean, really, I mean, what happened was during lockdown, um, obviously, same, you know, I, I just wanted to keep busy, same as everybody else really. And um I just put it out there on Facebook, you know, does anybody want to help me out just to do a few covers? Um, and Mick, Mick got back in touch with me and said, yeah, yeah, you know, I'll be I'll be well up for that. And I mean, obviously, we had plenty of time on our hands. So uh, I, I think we we did three covers over lockdown. Um, we did a we did a bolt thrower one. Um, we did a Bathory track and we did an Entomb track with various, me and Mick with a, me and Mick were the solid through the whole thing, and then basically we had um, we had Gord from Dark and Hemper from Dark and um, Dave from Benediction helped us out with a um, entomb track. Uh, Jason Walton as well, he helped us out with a few bits and pieces, and um, a few of the guys, um, Steve from. Um, Oh God, a bad and incarnate over. I've said that wrong over in Ireland. He helped us out with uh, the Bathory track as well. I think um, I remember seeing the one with David Ingram, um, yeah. Soy, Soy from um, Ash and Crown as well. He helped us out with the Bolt Throw yeah. one. Anyway, so we were, do we were doing these tracks and quite enjoying it. 
And then um, me and Mick were discussing what we were going to do. And we both sort of like came to the conclusion of, well, instead of spending all this time doing covers, why not work on some tracks of our own? And literally, that's where it all started off. So, I mean, obviously, um, the, the, we we asked um, Kieran, you know, from Ashen Crown, if they fancied doing it, helping us out on vocals. Um, he was happy enough to do that. Uh, Jason Walton as well. He, he, he was happy enough to help us out with the bass. But obviously, as things went on, um, it became quite clear that maybe that re- logistically couldn't work in a way. Do you know what I mean? You know, because you know, if we ever, if we ever, we, you know, as soon as we started making a few tracks, we did the first little EP, and things sort of like started. You could tell people were becoming interested in it. Um, so Jason sort of like said, "Well, you know, I don't think it's going to work with me," in, and decided to sort of like, uh, you know, take a step back. Um, but me, me and him work on a different project now, which is sort of like something me and him are quite interested in. Uh, and that's when Lee was asked as well. So then Lee came on board and that's how Death Collector came about, really. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a cool name as well, isn't it? The Death Collector, Death Collector. It comes from an old 70s movie. It was... Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, it was old, a sort of um, old, old sort of like you know, you know, one of these sort of uh, you know gangster type things. Uh, it was, it isn't a very good movie, but that's where the that's where the band <laughs> yeah. came from. Yeah. So Lee, you um, you've played bass on this out while you're in this band, and um, when we did our interview last week, you told me a really cool story. And it, whenever I do interviews, normally when I pre- stop. Pre- I press unrecord or stop recording. All the gold comes out then. And uh, you told me a really cool story about a certain bass that you own. Did you play that bass on this as well? I did indeed. Yeah, I yeah. did indeed. Oh, you can tell. Go tell. Go ahead and tell this story then. Because... Uh, oh, do I have you... to? <laughs> right. Basically... Or does you don't want your missus to know how much money you spent. So... Oh, she knows. <laughs> oh, she knows. I'll, 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 I'll try and keep it brief, but... Uh, basically, during lockdown, I I was searching the internet because uh, I remember Eric Hoffman from Dayside had a guitar for sale. And I was bored one night and I was drinking and I thought, I wonder if I can find it. I wonder, if, I wonder what their deal was with it and if I could maybe score it. So I messaged him and he saw the message pretty soon after me sending it because his little icon lit up. And but he never got back to me, and I just thought, well, you know, I'm just a chancer from the UK. He doesn't really know me, so you know, why why should he reply? Anyways, I carried on looking, and I also carried on drinking, and I came across this advert on Reverb, and it was basically for one of Glenn Benton's old basses that he used in the recording of uh, Serpents of the Light, uh, the album, and it was still available. So I messaged the guy and said, you know, would you ship this to the UK? And he said, yeah, too, right. It, it, it's going to cost you, but if you want it, you can have it. So I said, all right, give us a total price. That was it, just t- complete tunnel vision then. And, uh, yeah, maybe credit card goes super limp forever and ever and scored myself this uh, Dayside base, which was obviously going to be, a, you know, a pride and joy in the collection. And yeah, I carried on partying that night because you know I was celebrating the fact that I'd, I'd scored this unicorn. And uh, in the morning, I woke up half past seven with a, a, a really, really bad headache. And I said, the first thing I saw on my phone was this notification with Medic Hoffman. And he said, I'll see if my brother has any for you. And I thought, oh, you know, so I too like try and moonwalk out of that conversation, so to speak, because. You know the history, the history, and all that, and uh, yeah, don't worry, mate. I bought one of Glenn's instead. <laughs> yeah, well, I wasn't going to say that, but uh, I really wanted one of Eric's guitars. In all truthfulness, yeah, and I know Brian does build them, and you know one of them would be great. But to, to see that there, and and for me to you know be on the hunt that night, and then it just be there, it was uh, yeah, it was. I was going to say a no brainer, but I've got it now, and it is getting used. So yeah, very happy with it. 
and it's on two other albums now as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh, I played live with it when we done our gigs in uh, Nottingham and Birmingham, but um, I don't want to be taking it out on the road no more now. So I've got a I've got a replacement. Yeah. So well, can, let's get into the album then. We've got the uh, I'll show the vinyl off, and uh, we've got a. Uh, inlaid out with all the lyrics on and this is a awesome looking oh this, oh, this has got stuck all right the little so you get all the entertainment here folks <laughs> yeah is that crimson red it's looking and yeah the um it's a It's a hard album to review, really, because it's, it just goes straight for the throat. And it is very, it's a bit Thompson's Woods seal. It does what it says on the tin, isn't it? It's its a straightforward it, death metal it's, album. It's, yeah. Well, I, I i mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, like me and Mick we sort of like disagree on this because he says, he says it's a straight down the, straight down the line death metal album. But for me, it's not, it's, it's got a lot of other bits and pieces as well. It's, you know, it's got it's got that taste of you know, those little bits of hardcore in it, and little bits of you know old hardcore punk as well for me. I think you know, some of the riffs have got quite a bit of a punk element to it. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, yeah, yeah. The riffs yeah. are very straight. You know, there's there's not a lot of um, shredding as such. It's very thick. Yeah, there's a lot of groove but, in there as well. Yeah, but it is it is just. I mean, the whole album. It was you know we didn't want we didn't want intros. We didn't want sort of like you know time in the middle it was just going to be nine tracks you know go into the studio get that live feel you know and and that's and that's what i think we've ended up getting really i mean yeah i mean it was all very diy as well um but obviously um gord uh you know gord olsen who I, I used to be in dark and with he's a bit of a whiz full stop and uh he did the he did the mixing and the mastering and he just he just knew what it needed to sound like straight away mm. you know he knew exactly what it needed to be and i think he's done a great job and the album's you know it is a great album i think I, me personally i've done i don't know how many albums i've done but it's one of my you know it's one of my favorites because it is it is just for me as a, as the drummer it's the album that i've always wanted to do as a drummer do you know what i mean you know nobody told me what to do well not Nobody told me what to do. Yeah, but no, nobody sort of like influenced me and said, "Well, this track needs to be like this." I just did. I just went into the studio on my own and just did what I wanted to do, and I think it's worked out really well. Yeah, and when I say it, you know it's a straightforward death metal, I, I don't like saying old school because I think if something's good, it should stand up regardless of when it came no, no, out. No, no, no. But no. when it's um... Sometimes you don't need a twist or a pizzazz sort of new spin on something. If, if something's done right, I always use the food analogy. If something's cooked properly, it doesn't need to to have a new no, twist no, on no, it. No, you know? no. And um, no, no, no. yeah, in, but I, I think it, it's just a you know. I just I, I mean I know me personally, but I just, I just think it's a really good album. You know, I mean the tracks, you know, they're not over complicated. They're not they're not trying to be something. They're not. They're just good tracks that drag you along and. You know, sort of uh, bludgeon you about a bit, and then sort of like stop and go on to the next one. I, I, I think it works really well. Yeah, and, and in a way, I mean, really need, really need more albums like that as well. You know, you used to get more albums like that back in the nineties, that kind of thing. You know, with the, you know, all the hardcore punk stuff where it was just, you know, it was just the music was the important bit, wasn't it? Not everything else about it around it. Yeah, and a lot of modern death metal. Um albums now do become a sort of the musicians well, are sort of showing of off what they can do but they forget there's lots of themes you know an album an album now has to have a theme doesn't it you know the band has to have a theme you know that, and and there's too much of that i mean i know it's art and all that kind of things so you can't knock it because uh, you know what what's good art and what's bad art you know what's good music and what's bad music i don't know but you know there isn't any is there really but there, people do technically, you know, they do try and sort of like go for a go for an image, go for a theme, and you know, and sometimes, I, you know, it works, but it's not what I wanted to do anyway. 
I think there's a a good test for me when I'm listening to new albums as well. And when I was, I've been putting this on for a couple of weeks now, and the one that um, the first one where you're you're nodding your head and going, okay, yeah, let's put that one back on. What's that one called again? And that what first one that jumped out to me was uh, Mental Headiness because you had that big groove in the middle of it when it cuts into that half time and just just lets the riff breathe. It's nice. And uh, and then there's a few um, tracks where the solo stood out to me as well. Terrorizer was a standout for me, as well as, um, in fact, the, the middle three, uh, Course Visions, Terrorizer, and A, a, a Taste of Ico. I don't know if I pronounced that. I thought I said that out loud before. No, but, uh, got, that free run one. in the middle there was really um, solid bit in the middle. And then, um, yeah, I'll just listen to it again one more time before we... Um, Come on, and Re Revel in the Gore is another one as well. And this is the, what's good about it is different tracks pop out each time. Um, I like I like the breakdown in Revel in, Revel in the Gore. I like the breakdown down in the middle, you know, where it's sort of like the drumming. The drumming in the, you know, it builds up and then it just sort of like um, goes to sort of like half-time groove and it works really, really, really well, like, you know, that does. But um, I think... Yeah, it's it's a good solid album, and you know, there's it's there's sort of things we maybe could have done better, but uh, I'm I'm happy with it. Yeah, anything you want to chip in, Lee? No, it's all it's all been said. So all we've good. you've got um some gigs coming up in the summer, so it's looking like this is going to become is this more or less going to be your your focus now going forward? Yeah, want to answer that, Lee? Uh. Yeah, we're talk we're talking about all the gigs. Go for it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have uh, three shows coming up next week: uh, Leicester, Birmingham, and Bristol. And then at the end of March, we're out into the uh, the Siege of Limerick Festival in Ireland. We're really looking forward to that because you, you see what goes on over there. It looks really, really cool. Uh, and then we have what would actually be classed as a hometown gig for me, because it's literally 40 minutes down the road. Uh, there's another festival called the Funeral Fest in Cumbria, and that's organised by a, a mutual friend of the band called Matthew Davidson. Uh, that's over two days, and I think we're playing on the Saturday night. And then after that, we have a slot at Bloodstock on the Sophie Lancaster stage, which is, for me personally, it's like I won't have experienced anything like this ever before, so that's something I'm really, really looking forward to. Yeah, that's and then one, it? Bloodstock, yeah. one more at the end, which has not been announced, so I'm not going to say anything about that. But That's all right. That's fine. Yeah. I understand. the um, You let the cat out of the bag too quick and then things... But, um, <laughs> before the... Oh, I was going to say also as well with the with the gigs as well. Um, although although we are doing all these gigs, pretty much that those are all the gigs we're going to do this year with the extra one later in the year because realistically, with everybody else doing their own bands as well and other stuff, um, and, and working and families, we just haven't got the time to do any more. So I think we're just going to jump in and then jump out really, and that's that's going to be it. That's it. Yeah. Um, also, while the uh, album's available, there was also the EP before Time's Up, which is, is this, um, the tracks on this are on the album as well. Is it the same recording session or was this a previous? No, no that, it was a complete, that, the, 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 the EP, um, I rec for me personally, I recorded all the drums on the EP at home, right. uh, whereas in the album I went into the studio. That, with my, the songs are already recorded, yeah, I just wanted to clarify yeah, that because yeah, yeah. some people yeah. might look at it and go, oh, what's the point, but. No, so it's definitely worth picking both up. And, uh, yeah, so the gigs you've got this weekend, they I did see the poster for it. Remind me who they're with. The... Next weekend. Yeah. Next weekend. Uh, Damn Him. Is they, uh, the, that would be the main band. Uh, the name escapes me of the other bands. They were. Uh, uh, is it three different bands on three different nights, Andy? Yeah, I think... Um... Is it more? I can't remember whether how you pronounce it. More 
do I, do I, do I, or something like that. More do. Yeah. Um, they they played with us before, haven't they? Um, we've got Digital Bath playing with us on the Saturday in Birmingham, which I'm quite looking forward to. I haven't seen them. I haven't seen them before. They're like a, a sort of like mix up between jazz and death metal and different things. I think. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember. Can you remember who's playing on the Saturday? No, I know. No. I'm the, the Bristol one. Sorry. I'll have a quick look now. Hold on. Yeah, you're doing a three but, days uh, running, yeah? So you're going to be coming back home or you're going to be in the... Have you had, I had a van or...? Uh, yeah, so we've got... Uh, we, I think everybody's coming down here on... Uh, we're all meeting up on Thursday, next Thursday for a rehearsal. Um, and uh, then, yeah, we're out Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Then we're all busy doing other stuff again for a couple of weeks and then over into over into Dublin, so Slew Siege, which should be really, really good. I've done that. Well, I've, I've done I've done Ireland a few times before, and it's always a good always a good night. Yeah. So, um, I want to talk about the uh, artwork on the album as well. Can you tell us a bit about that and who the artist and? Well, you might you know more probably know more about that anyway, don't you, Lee? With what Kieran did anyway, because I don't know nothing about all that sort of stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kieran. I've panned my drums. I'm done. Up to you lot now. That's this, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I tried, honestly, I try to. I, I, you know, I mean, I'm happy just doing. I do, I'm happy just doing the, the drums and then just sort of like, um, yeah, just tinkering. Sorry, I can't, I, I can't read that logo, but that's the that's the other band you were asking about. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's... Nice and easy read there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No. Uh, Kaden took it uh, for his. All his sins, he, he he wanted to do the artwork and, yeah, done an amazing job. Oh, the vocalist he, did the... He, he, he likes all this, doing the layouts and, you know, like I say, done the Times Up EP as well and, yeah, done a cracking job. Yeah, I see he's... Oh, I'm having a look on... Uh, so he's the singer in Ashen Crown and you've got on the guitar uh, Mick... Perry from Zealot Cult as well. Yep. I remember I've got their CD um, here somewhere. I know I have because I saw them opening up for Skeletal Remains. Really good band. Yeah. So um, yeah. So you you are kind of scattered around a bit, but you're you're making it work. Yeah. And that's it. Like you say, you can dive in and dive out. I, for me personally, like what I what I found most incredible about this band is. Like the first time we rehearsed, the you know, first time we all we all ever got together, like nobody was nobody was going to let any let it down. Everybody came, you know, fully prepared. The songs, you know, the songs were learnt and and everything was just spot on, as if we'd been jamming together in a room for a long time, you know. And like I say, we are we are we are scattered around, but everybody everybody puts the work in and everybody knows the parts. And when we come together, it's just uh, it's just a good crack, you know. You can't beat that either, can you? When you're in yeah. the room together, in you, you you don't get the awkwardness when it when it does just slide into place straight away. It, you you hit the ground running, and yeah, it's great. And it rather than we just kick, we just kick off and start playing. That's it. And yeah, but that so, was one of the um, that was one of the the sort of like ideas for the band as well that. We're, basically, we just wanted to have a bit of fun. It wasn't. I didn't. I, I mean, me personally, I didn't want the band to take over. You know, because I've been in. I've been in bands before where I've been on six week tours and all that kind of stuff. You know, all over the all over the place. And it and it does start to take over your life in a way. Do you know what I mean? So and the stipulation for this band that it was just going to be a bit of fun. If nothing happened, it didn't matter. Do you know what I mean? And if we did a few gigs, that's fine. It didn't matter if we didn't do any gigs. You know, it was just a case of. Uh, have a bit of have a bit of a laugh, really. Everybody came down to Birmingham as well. Uh, everybody stopped over, went out for a few beers, and just enjoyed it. Really, it was just a bit of fun. Do you know what I mean? And in, in a way, that that's what that's probably years ago, back in the eighties, why I got into music and bands. Yeah, I mean, you've got. Um, you said something that I was going to reply to, but <laughs> then you've said about the, coming back to the eighties. I mean. You must have seen you. You was involved in you know the death metal scene and slash grindcore as well. I mean, how do you? 
I'd love to know your perspective of how you've had the scenes change, but in other ways, it's, it's kind of stayed the same, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, I mean, very much so, really. But I mean, when when I mean, I I started I started in bands. I think uh, oh God, early eighties, basically. I was in a punk band called Urban Chaos or something like that. I think they were called, um, you know. But and then sort of like you know, eighty six, I joined Bolt Thrower. And I mean, then there wasn't a, you know, there wasn't a scene or anything, you know, it was all what, you know, the death metal, you know, there wasn't anything. It was, it, it was just hardcore bands and metal bands, just, just, you know, just getting together, basically, people like-minded people. But I mean, really, I mean, in the early days, it was very much DIY where, you know, you, you'd have bands like Ball Thrower, Carcass, you know, with playing with bands like, you know, axe grinder, sort of, you know, so it was very mixed and matched together. Do you know what I mean? You know, there wasn't, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't sort of like hardcore band like gigs and death metal gigs. It was just everybody was shoved together and it was all very DIY. It's... And I mean, I mean, so in a way, I sort of, you know, I mean, over the, over the 80s and the 90s, you know, saw it all sort of like, you know, the earache, all that kind of thing, and the way it all blew up over, you know, the early eight, the early 90s, should I say. And, um, but then, then obviously, about 94, I think I left, and I basically took about 20, 19, 20 years off. But then obviously coming back with Memoriam, you can see the way that the, that, you know, the whole scene has changed in a way, where now it's more, it, everything's more d designed around, festivals summer festivals isn't it really like, you know where years ago you know well, it was just gigs wasn't it really like. yeah but how many fest i mean even in the last 10 years say or 20 years well yeah say 10 years you've got you would have had what a dozen festivals you had the big ones and then that was it now you, you've yeah. got probably a dozen festivals every weekend yeah 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 no and that's then, it yeah i mean popping up everywhere like, it's just, I mean, but that, you know, I mean, that's, that's the way it is, isn't it? You know, get lots of bands on, get people in. I, I don't, I mean, I think, you know, I mean, for the smaller, the smaller sort of like bands like us, I suppose, you know, and they, and I suppose there's, you know, there's other bands that are sort of like haven't got releases. It's just a nightmare trying to put on, I mean, even these three gigs last, you know, next week, they were so much trouble for Kieran to sort out, you know, so... You can you can understand why if you get offered five or six festivals here, there, and everywhere, it's just easier, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's funny as well because you were saying about the early days, you're getting, you know, special magazines coming out now. But people are writing books about it, and it does look like it, there was just this massive explosion. And yeah. Um, yeah. Was there an explosion, or was there just sort of? Oh, yeah. Was, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. was you yeah. aware of it all kicking off and going no, on? No, in a way, I mean, I, I was talking to somebody about it. Uh, somebody was, I can't remember who it was, but you know, I mean, it was it was a case of, you know, I mean, what what sort of like started it all off, I suppose, would have been, you know, all the sort of like early bands, like you know, like Carcass, Napalm, uh, you know, Bolt Thrower, whatever. You know various other bands. I'd say you know they're they're sort of like exposure on Radio One in a way with John Peel. You know, I mean that that sort of like push. I mean, like for me personally, back back in the very early days, I used to I used to sort of like do all this sort of yeah, um, yeah. the the you know the, all the correspondence in a way. You know, for Bolt Thrower. So I mean, on the first album, you know, in Battle, I think on the back it's got my old flats address, and I mean they're. <laughs> Yeah, it's not there anymore. So somebody's not getting loads of mail. But um, but the difference in yeah, mail I did want to mention I didn't a CD I ordered didn't turn up. If you keep... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, but yeah, I mean the difference the difference in a way between before we did the peel session and then after the peel session was just bonkers. You know, I mean my postman used to knock the door with sort of like you know a bundle of bundle of letters from people from all over the world basically and then as as you went on you know you could see it you could see it all building up and then in the early in the early sort of like i don't know 90s i suppose when you've got all the earache bands you know brutal truth all that kind of stuff you know you could see the fact that the the venues we were playing and the tours that we were doing were just 
bonkers. I mean, even to affect to grind crusher, that was a massive thing as well. That was the biggest, you know, the biggest, biggest tour of that kind of music up to yeah. date, up to that time, really. Yeah, I mean, you, that, that's on DVD as well, isn't it? It's in part, it, yeah. it, you've got Napalm Death, yourselves, Morbid Angel, and Cathedral. Was that no, it was Carcass, wasn't it? No, 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 that was that was that was the follow on, wasn't it? That was, that was the, the God's Grind, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. So you could see, you could see the way it was, you know, the way that everybody was getting interviewed by, you know, like one minute you were getting interviewed by fanzines, next minute you were getting interviewed on, you know, sort of like MTV and all that kind of stuff. And you, you know, so yeah, it did, it did, it, it did explode, you know. And I mean, it was just you know, as much here as it was in America as well, wasn't it? Because you obviously had the earache yeah, bands yeah. and then the American and, Florida. And... and then obviously, and then obviously with the earache thing as well, like, you know, I mean, there was all that, um, oh God, I can't remember what record label in America got involved, did it? Or was it, you know, a Columbia or something like that? You know, and then that, that was, that was another thing for a lot of the bands as well, you know. So you could see the difference between, you know, but um, I mean, it it was it was good it was good fun, but I mean, you know, obviously, it's sort of like a load of load of twenty year old bloody well, even with people like N two, where they were probably only seventeen or eighteen, weren't they? You know, yeah. bloody going on tours all around the world. It was sort of like you know, sort of uh, quite an eye opener, really, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, but uh, don't know if you've ever heard of Garotted. I yeah, uh, yeah. was speaking yeah. to Ben, um, the singer from them, uh, a few years back, and he just said, you know, now you've got e email, mobile phones, everyone. I mean, back then, he went, you got a letter saying, fly to Germany, and we'll meet you here on this date at that time. And like, yeah. you would fly out there and go to hope this is the right place and just hope someone turned up. And then a car would turn up, and, oh, hi, and, and off you went, you know. I mean, you wouldn't dream of doing that now, you know. Just a different time. I mean, in a way, it was a nicer time because it, it was nice to actually get letters for it. It's nice in a way to see some people that have still got letters from me from back in the nineties. Do you know what I mean? And I think, God, you sound like it's very really illiterate, but um, but you know, but uh, you know, I mean, so it was it, it, in one way, it was, you know, it was a good time. But I mean. You know, it, it, is the internet any better? Does anybody actually take any notes of the internet, really? <laughs> so, well, so, some do, and they and they probably shouldn't. But uh, yeah. yeah, like I say, it's massive advantage in one way, and enough of you know that's a debate we could have all night, isn't it? But um, yeah, yeah. So Lee, how does it feel then? So you've got you know bolt for a picture disc on your back wall there, and uh. You listen to these albums, and then years later, you're you're drumming, you're you're playing with the man. How did that feel when you first got that call and first started recording and having the rehearsals, yeah, etc.? It, it, it took a while to get my it took a while to get my head around it, and I was probably guilty of being overly enthusiastic in the beginning. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You've got to you've 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 got to be put in this position to see how you would react yourself. But I've I've learned to calm down a little bit now and just go with the flow and and yeah. Enjoy the ride. So yeah, so we've got um some gigs coming up. We've got a solid lineup. Everyone's happy. I suppose the next question in is uh new material. Is there any in the pipeline or is it we've um I mean, you're with prosthetic records as well, and it seems to be getting really yeah. good feedback, the album. So they, yeah, but they must be happy. Me and Mick have got a sort of like, uh, in, you know, like um, Gmail sort of like, you know, drive thing going. But I think we're going to have, I think we're gonna have a, a good old chat about it. We've got an idea of what we want to do. I think we're going to, and we've got some ideas. So I think, I think we're going to have a bit of a chat about it next weekend, because obviously we've been together for three days. So we can sort of like work out what we're going to do because we've had we've had lots of ideas and sort of like said yeah well you know we'll do it after this and we'll do it after this and not got round to it but I mean on on the other hand I mean, for me personally I, you know I've been I've always been in bands that are sort of like um, you know every year every eighteen months releasing albums and I've done that for years and so it's quite nice to just sit back and sort of like say well let's just enjoy this album do you know what I mean. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, Memoriam in particular were pretty prolific. They were hard to keep up with at one point. It was like another... Um, yeah, but I mean, my other argument to it as well is, you know, I mean, most of the gigs we do, uh, probably half an hour, 40 minutes max. So, you know, I mean, if, if, if one or two albums, one or two albums is enough for a, a while, do you know what I mean? So, mm. you know, they, otherwise what happens is you do, you do a cracking album like we've got now, then you do another album year, year and a half later. What you what you drop? Do you know what I mean? So it's it's a hard one, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. So to me, me personally, I just wouldn't enjoy it in a way, you know, sort of like see where see what happens with this album. It's yeah. still picking up a lot of people. There's there's a lot of interest still being picked up with it. Do you know what I mean? Like you say, it's it's not been an instant hit. It's just trickled out there. And people have gone, hang on a minute, I haven't heard that. And then that is a good album, do you know what I mean? So hopefully that'll keep doing, that'll keep going for a bit. Yeah, it's stable for a while. It's a solid album. You've got, to, like I say, you've got a set that will stand up and hold up for a while. So yeah, let the, um, just let it, let the good times roll, let it breathe. And um, there you go, folks. So do you want to, this is available on uh, Prosthetic Records. I'll put the uh, link to the band camp in the description under the video. Uh, get yourself a vinyl, get yourself a CD, get yourself a T-shirt. And uh, yeah, check this album out because it's a it's a vicious, blunt force trauma of an album. And um, as well as some blistering solos as well. And uh, obviously some pummeling drums and some pretty tasty bass on there as well. So yeah, thanks a lot, guys. And um, check out death collector and thanks for watching give us one of them and a comment below and i'll see you all later no problem take care mate cheers Joe. oh no so